yes so let us start with the session this is aicd sponsor prerna center for sc sc student at vidya pratishthan kamal nayan bajaj institute of engineering and technology baramati we are learning the gate session for the subject electrical and electronic measurement and the topic we will cover is bridges and the different measurement methods along with the gate questions okay so let us start this is about 4.5 so approximately 5 marks that we are allotted for the gate exam so now let us proceed further yes so so far we have discussed about the capacitance inductance bridges now we are dealing with the resistance how we can measure the resistance low resistance medium resistance high resistance along with that okay let us just first summarize classification of this resistance and before that let's have the recap for resistance measurement so the, the there are different types of resistance material one is manganese which a uh, composite of copper which is 80% nickel 12% manganese 4% and alpha that is resistance coefficient is about 0.00015 per degree celsius correct next we have constant time that is copper of 88% of total nickel is 12% and alpha is of 0017 per degree celsius so both have the low value of alpha so it won't change with the temperature but the copper is having a high value which will change with the temperature that is 0.004 per degree celsius okay so along with this these are the resistance measure useful for the measurement of resistance now what we are doing we are classifying the resistance as per the low resistance medium resistance and high resistance okay so when we comes for the classification when it comes for the classification we will classify on the basis of the value of resistance so if resistance is having very less value if resistance is having very less value so it belongs to the category of low resistance if it is in between 1 ohm to 100 kilo ohm then it belongs to the medium resistance if it is le less than 1 ohm so it belongs to the low resistance and if it beyond the 1 ohm a uh, 100 kilo ohm so we'll say it is a high resistance correct now what are the rules see what is what we are saying when we are having low value of resistance or medium value of resistance or high value of resistance so accordingly the applications are there okay accordingly we are using this for particular application see if you want to use if you want to use this for the measurement of earth resistance so uh, for basic say let's earth resistance so for earth resistance we know a uh, resistance should be very low okay so this such type of measurement belongs to the low resistance in reverse of it if you want to measure the insulation resistance of the cable so definitely we need a insulation tester measure and with that which have a high value of resistance correct so depend on the application depend on the use of the application we have classified the resistance in terms of low resistance medium and high resistance correct yes so let us see which are the different types uh, different application for low resistance we have the ammeter internal resistance we have motors we have generators we have the transformer winding resistance we have earthing resistance that what we have discussed right now all semiconductor uh, devices which are forward bias so these are some devices which are belongs to the low resistance correct apart from that we have the medium resistance so medium resistance is the range of about 1 to 100 kilo ohm correct so our human body resistance belongs in this category medium resistance correct 
so dc machine dc shunt field winding your all types of heater coils human body as i've just said human body resistance this is also uh, it is around 600 volt to 1 kilo ohm voltmeter resistance these are belongs to the medium one and when we are talk uh, about the high resistance so definitely first picture the practical is cable, cable insulation resistance so for that we are use a maker also apart from that we are having certain transformer winding insulation resistance then semiconductor device in reverse bias so in reverse bias we are having high value of resistance correct yes so which are now the question will be which are the different methods we need to follow for the measurement of for the measurement of resistance as was the today topic is about the bridges and the different methods so we have the methods of potentiometer and kelvin double bridge we have the methods to measure as volt ammeter method substitution method western bridge method we have the measure of loss of charge mega mega ohm and direct deflection so there are certain methods there are certain methods based on that based on that we will look for each and every method in detail okay so let's begin with the low resistance measurement First we have low resistance method and for that we have Kelvin bridge, Kelvin double bridge. Okay, so now let us just discuss about this one and let us solve some numerical based on that. Yes. So the low value of resistance measurement, first one is Kelvin double bridge. So in Kelvin double bridge, just understand the concept. In the previous one, what we observe? The unknown value of resistance are given and we are just comparing it with the standard one and the known value. Correct? This was the perception. Now, if you are using this for the DC bridge, so your source will be battery so this source is a dc called a dc bridge under this dc bridge condition when we are forming any bridge there is a role of galvanometer when it shows the null deflection it means that it means that your bridge is now balance one correct when it shows the def null deflection it means that your bridge is now balance one and for balance condition we write some equation we write uh, we wrote uh, write some equation that is that is p by q or we can say r by s is equal to p by q so which is r this is my r this is s and this is p and this is q so this is a basic uh, resistance or we can say balance equation but before proceeding that we will start with the initial one that is r is equal to this r is equal to p by q p divided by q plus q into r this is r upon p plus q plus r that is these three resistance these three terms p plus q plus r that is nothing but into multiplication p by q minus p by q so what are these so let us understood these are the lead resistance p and q are the external arm a small p and q are the internal arm resistance s is the standard variable resistance and the small r is the terminal or lead resistance correct and the, these are that is what we need to find out is nothing but your unknown resistance correct so advantage is it's used to eliminate the lead resistance effect so that suitable for the measurement up to micro ohm range and this is the best application for 
transformer winding. A smallest part of resistance can be measured with this Kelvin double bridge. Correct. Next we have a potential method. Potential method is a very simple one. Only the will will connect the VR is a test resistance and this is a standard standard resistance. Okay, so we'll just pass the, our basic formula and we'll get the answer. Correct. Now let us solve one numerical based on it. A measurement of resistance by using a potentiometer of four volt is observed across the test resistance. And six volt is observed across the standard resistance of two milli ohm. Find test resistance. What they have given? Let us recap again. Measurement of resistance by using potentiometer four volt is observed across the test resistance and six ohm is observed across the standard resistance of two milli ohm. So find the test resistance. Correct. This is what they have given. So VR is four volt, VS is six volt, RS is two milli ohm. RT is VR by VS. That what we have. RT R is VR by VS into RS. So VR they have given. That is unknown resistance voltage. Vs they have given that is known resistance voltage, and Rs they have given that is standard resistance. So four volt, six volt into T, that is four by three milli ohm. Okay. So this is what about the calculation part of your test resistor. So such type of only one line and uh, equations being asked in your gate exam. Regarding low measurement of resistance, now next we are having medium resistance measurement. Just now, what we have seen, we have seen a low resistance measurement. Now we'll see a medium resistance measurement so in medium resistance measurement what they have given volt ampere method is there and ammeter volt method is there correct two methods are there volt ampere method and ammeter volt method so let us understood the difference between this volt ampere you can just look at this section just look at this section only this is the change the rest of this uh, things are remains same means means at the start voltage will get applied across the load ammeter in series with it and this is a volt ampere method representation in ampere volt uh, meter presentation we are having current uh, current measuring device ammeter in series and in accordance with that we are having voltage in parallel to the load resistance okay so if you calculate the r value of rm so it becomes v by a so that is voltmeter reading upon ammeter reading correct v by a but we know v a now v is nothing but voltage across the ammeter uh, and the voltage across resistance and divide by total current that is IR. So the equation will be I into R plus I into R upon R. As we know, total resistance RM is nothing but what? R A plus R. And if we just rearrange the term, R is equal to RM minus R A. So we'll get the percentage error. So percentage error is nothing but RM minus R divided by R into 100 and percentage error will get is the difference of rm minus r r a divided by r into 100 correct now in ammeter voltmeter method r m is equal to v by a that is voltmeter reading ammeter reading r m is equal to v by i by nodal r is equal to r v into r m upon r v plus r m from the above equation so percentage r percentage r 
sorry, percentage error is nothing but Rm minus R divided by R minus of Rg upon Rv into 100. So the measured resistance is more than the actual resistance due to diameter resistance. Here, the major resistance is less than the actual resistance. So to reduce the percentage error, to reduce the percentage error, it is suitable for high value of resistance and the ammeter voltmeter method is suitable for low value of resistance. Correct? Yes. Next we have the Weston bridge. Okay. Now Weston bridge is nothing but just look into the picture. Western bridge is similar, it's a similar kind of you can observe here Western bridge is a one kind of electrical circuit, same as electrical circuit, which will be used to measure a unknown electrical resistance by balancing two leg of a bridge circuit. So you are having two leg of this waste stone and this will be utilized for the measurement of electric circuit. So where we calculate the unknown resistance with the help of bridge circuit. So for this, this two leg of the bridge circuit are kept balanced and one leg of it includes the unknown resistance. So the here, unknown resistance is nothing but your R. Now, the Weston bridge principle is what? Similar to the working uh, principle of potentiometer. Just now we have seen. If there is a, we have just modified it, the Weston bridge can be show, uh, can be used for other quantity also like capacitance, inductance, and it uh, also helps in finding out the amount of particular equipment in a particular time. So yes, definitely it is more useful for the calculations. So let us discuss about this Weston in detail. See, as you know, this is a uh, look like a diamond shape, the, the bridge, what we are looking for. It's look like a diamond shape. This one. It look like a diamond shape. So the western can be used to accurately measure the unknown resistance value, or as a means of we are to use it for the calibrating the measuring instrument, voltmeter, ammeter by the use of variable resistance and simple mathematical formula. Correct. Though. Uh, right now the question uh, in your mind though we have the multimeter provide the simplest way to measure the resistance why we are going for the western bridge correct western bridge uh, is necessary that we can use to compare an unknown resistance to that of known resistance to determine its value which will allowing a very low value of resistance in milli ohm range to be measured correct so the Weston bridge circuit can be used in the number of application like a transducer and sensor to the sensing device. Now this part is, we can keep the theoretical part. Yes, but we should know what is mean by the Weston bridge. Correct? Now, see, when we are saying we let us discuss about the construction part when bala, it is when balance equation we have so the western bridge can be analyzed simply with two series string in parallel two series string in parallel so the register in series we, uh, we have seen the register within the series chain produces voltage drop that is ir drop or voltage drop across itself as a consequence of 
current flowing through it which is defined by ohm's law correct so if you consider all the branches you will come across the things what happen in the both side of a parallel bridge which is are said to be balanced because voltage in the is will be the same at the in both the end that is if uh, consider the point c and a the voltage will be the same correct yes now let us check for the formula that what we have yes so for under balance condition we can we have ith or ig is equal to vth upon rth or we can say r is equal to e by q into s okay so the r is the measured resistance is independent of galvanometer internal resistance and source internal resistance correct yes now if if i say this is the one of the best most accurate measuring device for the measurement of current sensitivity how let us see current sensitivity is what it is the ratio of deflection of the galvanometer to that of current flowing through the galvanometer deflection of this galvanometer to the current flowing to the galvanometer so deflection of this galvanometer is shown by theta it is shown by theta and the ratio uh, to the current flowing through the galvanometer that is this is ig and ig we have calculated through this equation but for balance one ig is equal to always zero so voltage sensitivity is the ratio of deflection galvanometer to that of voltage across the galvanometer so it is mm per v yes so balance sensitivity bridge sensitivity sensitivity is theta upon del r upon r mm so in case of the bridge circuit sensitivity is an important parameter compared to the accuracy resolution precision etc so for maximum bridge sensitivity the equation is v into sv upon 4 this is the best mathematical equation for the calculating for calculation of maximum bridge sensitivity correct let us see the question what they are asking in westrom bridge with the added advantage of doubling the sensitivity of the bridge which of the following effect on the measurement is eliminated resistance of connecting indeed parasite emf temperature effect or thermocouple thermoelectric effect so we are having both the effect that is parasite effect evmf and thermoelectric effect correct yes now let us move to the next methodology that is high resistance methods so we have started with the low resistance medium and now we'll move to the high resistance method as first method is loss of charge loc method loss loss of charge method so at initial v is the voltage across the capacitor voltage across the capacitor at any time it is given as vc is equal to v into e raised to minus t upon rc r is equal to 0.4343t upon c log of v upon vc in t second time of second t correct so it is used to find the cable insulation resistance in research laboratory we are using we are utilizing this one correct okay so on that basis we have one uh, if we are so numerical that yes read out the numerical yes anyone read it out what they are given in loss of charge meter loc meter for measuring the insulation resistance of a cable and the voltage across a capacitance of 0.4343 microfarad is dropped from 200 volt to 
20 volt in one minute find the insulation resistance value what they have given in loss of charge meter for measuring the insulation resistance of a cable voltage across the capacitance of 4343 microfarad is dropped from 200 volt to 20 volt in one minute to find the insulation resistance value this is what they have been asked correct so we have the equation r is equal to you know, just now we have calculated v is equal to 0.4343t upon c log a into v minus uh, v divided by vc so let us put this value substitute this value let us check what we get Yes, substitute this value. What the value they have given? R is equal to 0 0.4343 into 1 into 60 upon 0.4343 into 0.4343 to 10 to minus 6 log of 10 into 200 divided by 20 and we will look for the equation if you put this value log of 200 divided by 20 is equal to 60 mega ohm this should be the value correct yes Now let us move to the next one that is Megar. Yes, the Megar. So this is what the best important what we have about the Megar. So let us go. Uh, discuss about this So before that, let's have a small discussion on the inductance value. That's our what we have.
द मेगर just a second let me check my connections so we are discussing just the types of uh, measurement of bridges and uh, different measuring devices so now we are based on that let us have a requisite so before that let me check just uh, what can we do so that for the better understanding so <clears throat> let me show you the something that will be helpful for you okay okay now network issue has been solved just okay we will start again what they are saying as we are proceeding for the maker so maker is nothing but uh, electrodynamometer maker electrodynamometer maker which consists of certain magnets a uh, calibrated scale now this is uh, belongs to the which classification high level of resistance as we have classified with the low medium and high this belongs to the high measurement so it consisting of potential coil current coil which are moving and these coils are connected in such a way the corresponding torque acts in the opposite direction that is both potential coil and current coil are rigidly connected in 90 degree here we are having one hand shaft through which we will rotate the, this particular spindle and at the end we will come across the particular measurement correct now this part is not that much uh, important let us understood the major rating uh, voltage rating should be uh, are available as 500 volt 1000 volt 
टू के वी टू टू फाइव के वी एंड द मिनिमम एप्लीकेशन वोल्टेज इज रिक्वायर्ड इज हंड्रेड वोल्ट दिस इज रिक्वायर्ड करेक्ट अब द एप्लीकेशन आर यूज फॉर द मेजरमेंट ऑफ इंसुलेशन रेजिस्टेंस ऑफ अ केबल यूज फॉर द वाइंडिंग इंसुलेशन रेजिस्टेंस ऑफ मोटर यूज फॉर जनरेटर एंड ट्रांसफार्मर बशिंग बुशिंग करेक्ट इन मेगर स्प्रिंग कंट्रोल वी आर नेवर यूज एज अ इन इंडिकेटिंग इंस्ट्रूमेंट वी आर यूज द स्प्रिंग कंट्रोल मैकेनिजम बट इन मेगर वी आर वी नेवर यूज द स्प्रिंग कंट्रोल करेक्ट सो द क्वेश्चन इज कंट्रोलिंग टॉक इन अ मेगर इज प्रोवाइडेड बाय वॉट एज वी नो इट इज नॉट कंट्रोल बाय द स्प्रिंग वेट is attached to the moving system so it is uh, it is ta- they are talking about the gravity control no we are not controlling in this way also it is not need any controlling torque correct the correct option is it doesn't need any controlling torque for the particular arrangement just a second now the next topic that we have the transducer okay so let us start with the transducer one what the important we just now we have covered with the bridges and now we are moving towards the transducer so it is important to have the systematic organization and analysis of measurement system an instrument which may be defined as a device or the system which is defined to maintain a functional relationship between the prescribed properties of the physical variable and much include ways and the means of communication to human observer correct so the generalized measurement system is the way that what the aim is the quantity to be measured we are using for that a primary sensing element this sensing element plays a role of conversion of element from the primary to the with the stipulated manipulation time this conversion we uh, from this conversion we have variable manipulation element then we have the data transmission and the final we will get the variable presentation element correct so transducer is the one who converts the primary uh, energy source a physical energy source into the required signal correct here we are using transducer for electrical energy signal so that's why it is called as transducer yes so first is primary sensing elements so primary sensing quantity under measurement make its first contact with the primary sensing element of a measurement system these are nothing but primary sensing element. then we have the variable conversion element we have the variable conversion element so output of the primary sensing element is converted to some of the suitable form of the instrument to perform the desired function to perform the desired function that is variable conversion element okay what we are looking for we are looking for this each and every block primary sensing element is what the quantity under the measurement makes its first contact with the primary sensing element of a measured system and variable conversion element is the output of the primary sensing element output of the primary sensing element is converted to some other suitable form for the instrument to perform the desired function then we have the variable manipulation element that is third block this variable function of this element is to manipulate the signal presented to the original nature of the signal that we manipulate the signal after that we have the transmission so the element transmits the data from one to another that is data transmission then we have the data presentation layer so in data presentation element element conveys the information about the quantity under the measurement to the personal and the instrument or the system for monitoring control and analysis purpose 
correct yes now let us discuss about the transducer primary transducer and secondary transducer the first transducer which converts the physical into the displacement pressure velocity which is to be accepted by the next stage is known as primary transducer so the output of such primary transducer is converted subsequently into the usable output by a device which is called as secondary transducer okay so when we are learning about the transducer there are two types primary as well as secondary transducer correct so the first transducer which will convert the physical phenomena into the displacement that is the first one and the second one is the converted subsequently into the usable output by a device is called secondary transducer correct so the passive transducer they derive the power required by for the transduction from an auxiliary power source resistive inductive or capacitive transducer are the active transducer they do not require an auxiliary power source to produce their outputs there are also known as self generating type of transducer since they develop their own voltage and current output correct yes apart from that the examples are piezoelectric and photovoltaic transducer analog and digital transducer analog transducer this transducer converts the input quantity into the analog output which is continuous function of time lvdt and thermocouple are the example of it then we have digital transducer this transducer converts the input quantity into electrical output which is in the form of pulses transducer and the inverse transducer first is the transducer a transducer can be broadly defined as a device which converts a non electrical quantity into the electrical quantity that is transducer inverse transducer or tra inverse transducer is defined as a device which converts an electrical quantity into non electrical quantity simple so yes now these are the types of certain transducer and these are types of electrical transducer we will discuss one by one these are the types of transducer primary transducer in mechanical devices just yes, just look into it what are they these are the mechanical one and these are the electrical one okay these are the electrical transducer see in practical world when we are looking for the scenario number of physical quantity are to be measured that is the pressure temperature flow correct these are the some parts that we need to measure for our application suppose in fact now just look into the screen there are certain type of electrical transducer i have given so in practical world number of physical quantities are to be measured 
एग्जाम्पल टेम्परेचर प्रेशर फ्लो करंट वोल्टेज सो सच फिजिक क्वांटिटी अंडर द मेजरमेंट इज कॉल्ड एज मेजर और इनपुट सिग्नल ओके सच टाइप ऑफ मेजर इनपुट सिग्नल इज एक्ट एज इंफॉर्मेशन फॉर द मेजरमेंट सिस्टम and this information may be in the form of physical form physical that is force or we can say displacement so such type of measurements are being used now what's our role in an instrumentation system instrumentation system the primary sensing element or the input device the input device may be consist of your primary sensing element and as a transducer okay so suppose for example in case of pressure measurement bourdon tube is primary sensing element you are correct so this bourdon tube will convert pressure into displacement and the displacement is converted into the electrical signal by transducer that is lvdt have you understood what i am saying so this is the actual transducer correct so in some cases this might be different so transducer is the only input device for example temperature measurement with the thermistor so transducer will define as a device which converts one form of energy into the another form correct so for example a mercury thermometer which converts the variation in temperature variation in temperature into variation in length of column of mercury for the uh, mercury thermometer correct so temperature uh, is readed as a calibrated scale as a degree celsius or farad directly so does the transducer provide a useful output in response to the specific input measurement so the measurement may be physical or the mechanical quantity correct but most of the quantity to be measured most of the quantity to be measured are non electrical such as temperature pressure flow displacement viscosity but the direct measurement of this quantity is not always possible so such quantities are required to be sensed and pro proportionally converted into some other form of con for convenience we use transducer correct so these quantities are generally converted into electrical quantity such as your current voltage capacitance so the electrical data is obtained is so easy to handle to convert to store to elect uh, transducer and more reason they are involved so the basically what in short if you want to summarize the transducer how it perform so the main functions are to detect or to sense the presence of magnitude or changes in physical quantity being measured and the second one is provides a proportional electrical output signal so the transducer left hand you will be having physical quantity and the other hand you will be having electrical quantity and the transducer will act as a excitation correct yes so basic requirement of the transducer or the parameter of the transducer are well look now okay. before that just have a look on this passive transducer then we look for the capacitance inductance and voltage currents these are very important self generating transducer yes just have a look passive transducer
Yes. So we have read out this. So these are the passive transducer we have. These are electrical parameter and classes of transducer. Principal operation. So let us see this one by one. First is a potentiometer device. Okay. As a start, we have discussed about the what potentiometer method. So position. What will the operation? Positioning of the slider by an external force varies with the resistance in a potentiometer or a bridge circuit. Typical applications are pressure and displacement. So next is we have resistance strain gauge. So resistance of a wire or a semiconductor is changed by elongation and compression due to the external applied stress. So it is used for the application of force, torque and displacement. Am I right? Yes. So strain gauge application we are look for. There is one curve base, curve base, and we a uh, wire has been wound on this. So this uh, semiconductor is changed by the elongation and compression due to the externally applied stress. Now Pirani gauge or hot wire meter. Pirani gauge or hot wire meter. So the resistance of a heating element is vary by convection cooling of stream of gas this is the mechanical part gas flow and gas pressure next we have the resistance thermometer so this resistance thermometer is the resistance of pure metal wire with large positive temperature coefficient of resistance varies with temperature so temperature radiant heat you can say temperature radiant heat correct Apart from that, yes, can anyone read it for the next one? Yes, what will be the next? Thermistor. Correct. So next we have the thermistor which uses the resistance of a certain metal oxide with negative temperature coefficient of resistance which varies with the temperature that is temperature application will be in the domain of temperature and flow. Apart from that we are having resistance hydrometer correct so resistance of resistance of conductive strip changes with the moisture content that is hydrometer so for the humidity measurement we use hydrometer then pv cell photo uh, no, this is a photoconductive cell so the resistance of the cell as a circuit element varies with the incident light so photosensitive relays are there now this above was about uh, were about resistance now we will let's look up for the capacitance so for the capacitance we have the variable capacitance pressure gauge this will distance between the two parallel plates is varied by the externally applied force and the displacement pressure then we have the capacitor microphone so sound pressure varies with the capacitance between the fixed and movable di diaphragm speech music noise such kind of application we are using capacitor microphone then we are having dielectric gauge so variation in the capacitance by changes in the dielectric and dielectric constant so the liquid level and liquid level and thickness will use for the capacitance then we are having inductance magic circuit transducer magnetic circuit transducer so self inductance or mutual inductance of ac excited coil is varied by changes in the magnetic circuit so the pressure and displacement is one of them then we have the reluctance pickup that is reluctance of the magnetic circuit is varied by changing the position of iron core of a coil so the pressure displacement vibration and position 
then we have different transformer differential transformer so we have we use this working principle for the pressure force and displacement the working principle is like the different shell voltage of two secondary winding of a transformer is varied by the positioning the magnetic core through an externally applied force and it is useful for pressure force displacement position then we have the eddy current gauge in eddy current gauge inductance of a coil is varied by the proximity of an eddy current plate displacement or thickness magneto friction gauge so in magneto friction is the magnetic properties are varied by the pressure and stress force pressure and sound and the last one we have voltage and current correct voltage and current so we have the hall effect as a pickup ionization chamber photo emissive cell photo multiplier tube so hall effect will work on the principle of potential difference is generated across the semiconductor plate when magnetic flux is interacts with an applied current so the magnetic flux current power these are the part of the voltage and current when electron flow induced by the ionization of gas due to the radioactive radiation practical counting radiation photo emissive cell electron emission due to the incident radiation upon the photo emissive surface light and radiation application we are using it photo multiplier tube secondary electron emission due to the incident radiation on the photo sensitive cathode light radiation and photo sensitive relays so for that we are using such kind of transducer and the last one we have self generating transducer so thermocouple and thermopile are the are the application of temperature heat flow radiations correct so an emf is generated across the junction of these two dissimilar metals of a semiconductor and when they have joined with when they have joined uh, the junction of two dissimilar metal or semiconductor then at that time this junction is work as a thermocouple correct then for moving coil generator for moving coil generator motion of coil in magnetic field motion of coil in magnetic field generates a voltage the application will be velocity and vibration next we are having piezoelectric pickup so an emf is generated when external force is applied to a certain crystalline material such as quartz so sound vibration acceleration pressure changes these are the part of your self generating transducer and the last one we have photovoltaic so photovoltaic is a voltage is generated in a semiconductor junction device when radiant energy stimulates in the cell so the example is light meter and solar cell correct yes so before proceeding further let us have yes so in your chat box i have posted one feedback link kindly fill this feedback form and we will resume our session very shortly okay
yes okay so let us start with the next part that is characteristics and choice of transducer see when we are choosing any kind of transducer basically what we look for we look for the basic requirement of that particular transducer correct so the basic requirement without basic requirement what they are given first is linearity then sensitivity then dynamic range Linearity, sensitivity, dynamic range, repeatability, physical size. So all these are the constraint or the constraint of the basic requirement of the transducer. The first one is linearity. So the relationship between a physical parameter and the resulting electrical signal must be linear. This is the basic requirement. Sensitivity is the second one. So the, the sensitivity of transducer should be high because because sensitivity is defined as the electrical output per unit charge in physical parameter. Correct. So, if the sensitivity of transducer should be high, if it is less, then your output will not get generated. Why? Because transducer is the one which have the best sensitivity and the output that is electrical output we will get is a kind of the thing that we respond uh, respect from the excitation correct so sensitivity of transducer should be high
yes next we will be the dynamic range so what is the dynamic range the operating range of a transducer should be wide so it should not be narrow why because it will permits its use under the wide range of measurement condition because because dynamic range is the one where we get the operating range of the transducer with a wide scope and it will permits its use under the wide range of measurement condition correct repeatability next we have the repeatability repeatability is deals with the for reliability of operation the input output relation for transducer should be predictable over the long period of time correct so this is the repeatability so it should be a good enough for the repetitive aspect now the question arises how we can select the transducer how we can select this transducer so as we have looked so far the number of transducer how we can select such type of transducer for our application so for that selection of transducer what we have discussed it uh, depends on the sensitivity operating range accuracy frequency response resonant frequency environment compatibility minimum sensitivity usage rigidness and the electrical parameter correct so the classification of transducer is primary and secondary transducer active passive transducer electrical mechanical transducer analog digital transducer transducer and inverse transducer correct so first is a primary and secondary transducer primary and secondary transducer is when the input signal is directly sensed by the transducer and converted into the appropriate signal directly then such transducer is called as primary transducer for example thermistor uh, we can take example of thermistor which is used for the temperature measurement when temperature variation occurs so the resistance of temp thermistor will also varies and this temperature can be measured in terms of resistance correct so there are many times direct use of transducer direct use of transducer takes place where just a second yes where we can have the input signal which is the first sensed by the sensor or detector or the power trans uh, primary transducer and it is given as input to the other transducer so secondary transducer for the conversion so for example in case of pressure measurement bellows acts as a primary transducer so pressure is applied to bellows and the displacement is produced which is transferred to the lvdt that is lvdt core lvdt produces output signal as per the displacement so the pressure is applied to the primary transducer and that is given to the lvdt that is secondary transducer output voltage correct now active and passive transducer active and passive transducer means what transducer are those which do not require any external power input for their functioning for example a piezoelectric crystal for the pressure measurement when differential pressures is applied to the piezoelectric crystal a voltage is produced across the two phases correct the pressure and the piezoelectric crystal voltage and the metallic electrode which is active transducer so the passive transducer are those which which require external power input for their functioning those are also those are also your known as external power transducer that is typical example of power transducer are the resistive inductive 
capacity transducer correct yes so for example we can consider the electrical or mechanical transducer like one of the skin we are having electrical transducer so the uh, transducer may consist of two important part if you just consider the, about the transducer it consists of two important part that is transduction element transfers the output of sensing element to the electrical output and the sensing element responds to the physical phenomena as a change in physical parameter so this device will convert the physical quantity into the electrical signal and the electrical signal often is very convenient to handle and the process so the electrical transducer are most popular advantage of electrical transducer will be it is easy for the electrical amplification attenuation can be done easily with static devices the effect of friction is minimized very small power is needed to control electrical and electronic system the mass inertia effects are minimized correct now Next is electrical signal if you can easily process and store by the using electronic circuit, correct the computers. The disadvantage of electrical transducer will be what? It is compared with the mechanical types. So it is very low reliability during the aging and drift of the active component. Very expensive sensing element and the signal conditioner where accuracy we can find is less compared to the mechanical type. So along with that we are having mechanical signal, mechanical transducer. These are nothing but this one. So these mechanical transducer are uh, many mechanical quantities that are to be measured in practical world so these mainly include force pressure displacement flow rate and um, such type of many transducer so most of the mechanical transducer converts the applied force into the displacement the mechanical elements used to convert the force into the displacement for electric chamber there are three types of electric chamber, elastic chamber one is direct one one is direct tension or compression type bending type torsion type generally the mechanical transducer are the primary transducer so some mechanical quantities and transducer conversion modes are, uh, are uh, shown here first is contacting spindle pin or finger the operation will be displacement to displacement Next is elastic member. In elastic member, we have proving ring, which is force to displacement, Borden tube, which is pressure to displacement. Operation will be pressure, which change into the displacement. Yes. Third is bellows, that is pressure to displacement. It converts your pressure to the another physical uh, quantity, that is conversion quantity, that is displacement. Then diaphragm is pressure to the displacement spring we have that is force to the displacement so see these are the elastic chamber next we have the mass so for mass seismic uh, mass is there which is converts the force function to the displacement pendulum scale is there force to the displacement manometer is there pressure to the displacement then we have the thermal which converts thermocouple that is temperature to the electrical circuit Biometallic temperature to the displacement and the temperature stick that is temperature to phase. Correct. Then we have hydromatic division that is static and dynamic that is float, fluid level, fluid level to the displacement, then hydrometer specific gravity to displacement. 
then we have dynamic that is office or uh, or orifice velocity to pressure conversion venturi velocity to pressure conversion pitot tube that is velocity to pressure vanes velocity of force and turbines linear to angular velocity analog and digital conversion are there so with this transducer is classified on the basis of nature of output signal that is analog and digital one analog transducer converts your input quantity into the analog output which is continuous function of time for example strain gauge lvdt thermocouple thermistor correct digital transducer which converts input signal to the output signal in the form of pulses or zero or one that is discrete output this makes use of analog to digital conversion transducer and inverse transducer broadly it can we can say that transducer is a device which converts non electrical quantity into the electrical quantity and inverse transducer is defined as a device which converts electrical quantity into non electrical quantity correct these are the types of transducer and inverse transducer now let us discuss the working principle of the transducer because that is also important
yes so resistive uh, transducer we look for that is yes characteristic and choice of the transducer so the first when choosing the transducer for any application the input transfer and output characteristics have to be taken into better understanding that is first is input characteristics so the type of input characteristics input and operating range and its loading effect the transfer characteristic is one the transfer characteristic is one where we look for the transfer function error response of a transducer to the environmental influences correct So, this characteristics of the output electrical component and the characteristics of all these parameters are going to change as per the transducer requirement. Am I right? Yeah. So, selection of transducer will be based on the sensitivity, operating range, accuracy, frequency response, regional frequency, environmental capability, minimum sensitivity usage rigidness electrical parameter so all these are the part of it so let us look for the basic requirement of transducer while selecting the particular transducer so we will first look for the relationship between the physical parameter and the resulting electrical signal must be linear that is linearity then we have the sensitivity of transducer should be high sensitivity of transducer should be high sensitivity is defined as the electrical output per unit change in the physical parameter then we have dynamic range so the operating range of transducer should be wide so that the perm it permits its use under a wide range of measurement condition then we have repeatability so for repeatability of operation the input output relationship for a transducer should be predictable over a long period of correct yes then we have the output characteristics the three conditions in the output characteristics we should be consider are the types of electrical output output impedance useful range then we look for the factors which influencing the choice of the transducer so the following are the factors influencing the choice of transducer for the measurement of physical quantity that is operating principle, sensitivity, operating range and accuracy. Apart from that, we have the cross sensitivity, error, transient and frequency response, loading effect, environmental compatibility, insensitivity to the unwanted signal, usage, ruggedness, electrical aspects, stability, reliability and static characteristics. Okay. So let us look for one example which of the following is the active transducer and you have to specify me why it is active transducer yes please let me know
reach one of the following is the active transducer photovoltaic cell fan gauge photo emissive cell or synchronous which one Yes. Yes. So, what will the aspect of the active transducer? It should be a photovoltaic cell. Correct. Why? Yes, so looking into the first scenario, what they are saying, photovoltaic cell, correct? The next what we have, next we have example 2, that is the transducer has an output impedance of 1 kilo, then what will be the 
this is when you want to read it out transducer has an output impedance of 1 kilo ohm and uh, resistance of 1 mega ohm the transducer behaves as how it will be behave answer is very simple how it will behave As the transistor has an output impedance of 1 kilo ohm and the load resistance is 1 mega ohm. So the transistor will behave as constant voltage. Yes. Correct? Yes. So, next is resistive, capacitive and inductive transducer. Okay. So, let us see one by one. These are the effect uh, as a primary transducer and through the use of second transducer. Suppose if there is a change in length, if there is a change in length, so as a primary transducer, linear and angular displacement and thickness are the part. And as a secondary transducer, temperature, pressure, then which one? Temperature, pressure. then fluid density flow rate then velocity acceleration altitude correct If you go for the change in length and area of cross section, then what will the most major area to be changed? So that is high pressure strain and the quantities to expect than velocity and altitude. That is one more concern. When we are dealing with the change in the resistivity, so temperature, thermal conductivity, these are the scenario. It means that when we are generally uh, changing the methodology for the resistance, capacity or inductance, potentiometer is a 1. Okay, so let us first focus on which one. This one. Yes. This is what? Yes, anyone? which kind of 
potentiometer or which kind of diagram it is there it is shown in the figure also potentiometer correct so the principle of such a resistive transducer is that the physical variable under the measurement causes a resistance to change in the sensitive element and this sensitive element Causes the common requirement in industrial measurement and the control work is to be able to sense the position of an object and the distance from it it is moved. Correct? Yes. Now the second one. Is your common requirement in industrial measurement and their industrial measurement and the control work so that will have to produce one kind of position transducer okay so the potentiometer what we are looking for in the screen it is about the basically potentiometer or simply pot that is linear and variable things Okay, so this sliding contact you can display as a wiper and it will be used for So this will be used as a measurement so this is a sliding contact called as a wiper so you can observe here the sliding contact or wiper so motion of the sliding contact may be translatory or rotational so some of the pot use the combination of these and this pot has a resistive element in the form of helix and therefore these are called as helipots correct now what is important over here okay so let us solve this example so you'll understood what is you are saying an ideal or unloaded potentiometer is having a displacement transducer which has a stroke of 100 mm and its resistance over its length is 1000 ohm make the calculation for power dissipated by the coil it may be pre-assumed that the transducer has an overall sensitivity of 0.1 volt per mm so this is what they are given now let us discuss what they have been asked they have given the potential transmitter and the xt they have given as 100 mm rp that what we need to find out is a thousand ohm and sensitivity is a matter of fact so what uh, it is sensitivity is 0 0.1 volt per mm so it is e naught upon xi that is e naught is equal to 0 0.1 volt and the xi is 1 mm okay first you try then let me know whether you are able to solve or not okay, try it once at least try
what we obtain we obtain the values yes we obtain the values what we are what we are asking for Rp is given, it is 1000 ohm and the sensitivity that what we are needed it is 0.1 volt per mm so E0 upon Xi that's what we need to find out and accordingly we will put the values in the equation and let us check what we have obtained so far. So what so far they have given we have e naught is equal to 0 0.1 volt we will convert into the xi that is 1 mm and this when xi is equal to xt that is 100 mm okay have you got it yes now We will put this value of i is equal to e, uh, e i upon R p. So that is 10 volt upon 100 volt. So the power dissipated by the coil is what I square into Rp. So I what we have 0 0.001 and into the 1000 ohm. So what we get? So the power dissipated they are asked for 0 0.1 watt. Correct. Next is about let me check the next example. yes LVDT so we have looked for the LVDT at the last uh, transducer that what we left linear variable differential transducer correct so it is most widely used in inductive transducer as Basic construction of LVDD is like a soft core iron is at the 
one uh, place and we are utilizing it for the perfect combination and at the end what we get is the what we need to observe so for this let us uh, say the transformer is this look like a transformer this is my particular primary winding the and secondary winding we have divided into the s1 and s2 so when the transformer consists this is a basic construction we will solve a numerical base on this that will the mole convenient correct we look for the advantage friction okay thing so the output voltage of LVDT they have given is 1.5 and the maximum displacement the load is 0.5 mega ohm and it is displacement is 0 0.003 a straight line through the origin linearity of the given load is okay so we know the percentage linearity is the equation is the maximum deviation that is plus or minus 0 0.003 upon 1.5 into 100 so how much we get 0.2 next equation we have the output of LVDT with input mechanical and motion of 10 hertz and the excitation frequency is 40, uh, 400 hertz will the contain uh, frequency so what will the frequency this is what they are asking for what should be the frequency so for invalidity we have what We have the module modulated wave frequency. So the modulated frequency is 4, uh, 400 they have given and the plus or minus 10 hertz they are asking for. So we'll just look for the range. So it will be 390 to plus 410, correct? This kind of combination that we can go for. now so this is the examples of LVDT. now we will look for the one more example and then we will end our sessions so So example is a metallic metallic tooth to uh, rotor having 60 teeth was mounted on the shaft whose whose speed was about to be determined. The pulse induced in the inductive type of magnetic pickup were registered to be 3600 per second. Estimate the shaft speed. If the frequency meter gives the counts within plus or minus 5 hertz, calculate the range within which the shaft speed can lie. So we have the equation that speed is equal to speed is equal to pulses per second upon number of teeth. Correct? Pulses per second upon number of teeth. So we have pulses uh, they have given as a 3600 upon the number of teeth they have given as a 60. So 60 RPS, that is 3600 RPM, we will get. Now we are looking for the accuracy of the measurement. Yes, just do the calculation, let me know. The frequency is 5 Hertz. So plus or minus 5 divided by 60. How much? Into 60. So it is plus or minus 5 RPM. So range of shaft speed will about 36 plus plus or minus 5. So 3605 and 3595, correct? The answer will be 3600 plus or minus 5 RPM, correct? Yes. So this session we have 
look for different measurement methods bridges and transducer types of transducer mechanical electrical all these things that we have looked so far correct now we we'll look for one more example okay you can note down this speed is equal to the formula we have written here speed is equal to n is equal to pulses per second and the number of teeth so n is equal to t by t rps or p by t into 60 rpm correct yes okay so we will end with this session here and we will meet in next session thank you still i keep this numerical on the screen you can take a screenshot and you can have a practice of it So let us solve this.